Hey everyone, welcome to Marine Mods. Today I'm going to go through how to basically pull the flywheel off an Evinrude e Tech. These are 200 horsepower 2013s. Uh, these are the small block 2.6s. I have not pulled the flywheel off one of these. Actually, I have. I've torn down a motor, but we're actually pulling this one off. We did a lot of work on these engines, they had water contamination throughout. You've probably seen other videos or pictures of me working on them. Uh, this starboard side motor was running beautiful. Both are running beautiful. Uh, but then it got a low voltage, system low voltage error. We hooked up a diagnostics. We monitored it. And we noticed that the 55 volt line, which powers uh, the fuel injectors and various other components on the engine, uh, was fluctuating dropping as low as 30 and when we hit 30 it pretty much went into safe mode or power reduction mode and would sometimes stall typically that is a sign of something failing on the 55 volt line there is a large capacitor in there which does filter and hold a bit of a charge keeping that line stable uh, that could go bad. We've already tested it. It's, the capacitor's fine. So then we looked under the flywheel, uh, hand turned it, and we did notice that there were several loose magnets. This will probably create enough, uh, basically it pulses, it's a magneto, creates AC, it converts it to DC, but if you have too much of a gap in between the pulses, you're going to have a dropout on voltage that the capacitor can't keep up with, and the capacitor will discharge and drop you know voltage and then your fuel injectors won't fire your spark plugs won't fire so that seems to be the issue we're gonna go ahead and pull that flywheel off and see if there's any damage to the stator and hopefully all our magnets are somewhat intact because if they do break you can usually glue them back on as long as you know there's enough meat there uh, we'll be right back with you so on this particular motor, you really got to get this pan off in order to access the flywheel. It means you got to take the computer out and put in a few tie wraps, the water lines, exhaust line on the other side. I marked the exhaust line with the red dot as to not confuse it because there is water and exhaust. Um, we'll keep going at it to get this off which is different from the big block 300 I did. It's pretty easy to access the flywheel. And on this one, of course, they want to make our life difficult. Okay, so what I've done is I cut enough of the tie wraps off to give us enough slack, hopefully, to just get the lift it up and off the side. I have to cut these out. I'm going to have to cut them out. Give you a close up of the magnets. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see them. So, here are your coils. And up against the edge of the flywheel are the magnets, and they're epoxied in. Uh, Evanrude makes an epoxy. Uh, I've ordered it. I'm actually going to find out if there's something better, something with high tensile strength and uh, high temperature. I think Permatex makes something, but this one's actually loose. It's moving around in there. All right. Okay, now we got it blocked off. It kind of slipped. I'll put my foot on it. And... Boom, that's all it really took. It already popped loose. All right, next step is let's get it out of here and uh, just take a quick look at it. I'm gonna be repairing it in the shop, not here. So we'll continue from the shop. Uh, definitely lost some magnets. They were stuck to the coils. 
There's two of them. Now these magnets are polarized. They're north and south, so they have to alternate north to south. They are super strong, as you can tell, man. The metal just sucked it up. We're missing a couple. A couple of them are together. So that was our issue. We're going to clean this up. Um, you have a lot of them off. You may want to run through them all. Just mark them one and two and alternate them when you put them back on. So they repel. So that one will go here. This one attracts. So we're in the right sequence here. So that one went there. And we got one more, which is more than likely going to go right there. By the way, the flywheel is heavy. So this one attracts, repels, then repels. So you're going right there, booger. So we'll continue this from the shop. Uh, I'll do a little research and find out if I can use an alternative to the Evinrude epoxy. Something that would be better. Especially if it's only a few dollars more. So we're not talking a lot. I think the packet from Mercury was like around 10 bucks. But you don't need a lot. These magnets are super strong. That's why they don't go flying all over the place. I mean, sometimes you'll catch and you'll crack one of them. As long as there's two, two big pieces, you just kind of line them up and glue them in that way. Uh, or go buy a brand new flywheel and spend $1,000 <laughs> because of a couple of magnets. Nah. Hey everyone, back here at the shop. So, obviously there were a bunch of magnets that have come loose. I think there was like almost half of them. I believe there's 18 total. These are polarized. I'm not sure polarized is the right word, but they're north and south. I've numbered them one and two, and they have to be this repels, that repels, this attracts. So basically get them spaced apart. Um, don't let this happen to you. You ready for this? I had one in my hand. It flew out because it was attracted to another. And it cracked. They will crack. So what I'm going to do is epoxy it back together the way it is. Since it doesn't lose the magnetism. And it is a number one magnet. It was here. So basically I lifted all the ones that are loose. There were various places in the five wheels. Some were right up against uh, the coils. I just wanted to get them labeled so I know which one's which. And we're going to go and JB weld these things on. Oh, you may have noticed I sandblasted the whole thing. It was all rusty anyways. And I'm going to coat it with a, uh, an epoxy primer. You see what just happened there? That's how strong these suckers are. So be real careful with them. And I'm going to check them all. Make sure there are none that are loose that I can break free with my hands. I wouldn't even attempt to try and remove these all. If they're glued in, leave them alone. You can see on this particular flywheel it left some marks where the old ones were placed. So I don't have to measure it. And hopefully I don't have to adjust the timing either since I'm putting back the same flywheel with the same spacing on the magnets. Mind you, if you do replace your flywheel, you will probably have to redo the timing on the motor. And this is a little dirty still, so I'm going to wipe it down before I epoxy. And I wanted to have a nice bare surface for the epoxy to adhere. These magnets were covered with some sort of, I guess, a nickel plating. It all flaked off. Uh... I think that uh, epoxy primer is going to seal it up real good. It has a good strength. Obviously, I'm going to epoxy everything with JB Weld epoxy. I'm going to hit up all the edges of the ones that are on there now just to sure them up a little better. And you know what? If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, well, then he's got to get another flywheel. But the customer said, let's give it a shot, try and save some money. And in the past, with the older flywheels, I've had them last three, four years, five years. Heck, some of the motors are probably still running. Anyways, uh, I'll get back to you once I get everything together. Uh, I ordered the epoxy primer. I, I could only get it on Amazon. Uh, it's like $24. The catalyst is built into the bottle. You push a button on the bottom of the bottle. It mixes, and it's good for 48 hours. You can also do it with a, um, 
a spray gun, but this it's just easier to get the can already um, ready to spray. Anyways, let me wipe this thing down, get all the residual dirt off of it, and we'll go from there. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm mixing up a little bit of JB Weld. It's a 50-50 mix. I like to put them side by side. That way I get a pretty good ratio. Uh, let's use the stick end of this Q-tip. And just go ahead and mix it all up. Mix it up real good so you get like a gray uh, color out of it. And I didn't get the fast weld. I'm in no hurry here. I guess I probably need to uh, move the magnets around to get them lined up. Then I'm going to apply a little bit to the approximate middle of the first magnet. Trying not to, you know, leave a lot of excess underneath it. And then I'll put some, let me find a number one magnet. That's a number two. Gotta keep these things separated, boy. Ah! Exactly. <laughs> Come on. I got a number one here. I got mark number one. And I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of it. Uh, I may clamp these down. I don't know. I may or may not. I don't think I even have enough small clamps to do that. I think the force of the magnet itself should be sufficient. And let's put this in place. Pay attention to the curvature. And I'm just going to drag that boy around where the old markings are. And it's a little bit recessed from the top according to the one that's on there now. So that looks good. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. And I'm going to continue on alternating them. Remember, they're different polarities. And we'll go from there. Okay, so I got all the magnets epoxied in, the ones that were loose. I got a clamp on this one that cracked on me. I took the two largest pieces. I got the small ones here. I'm waiting for this to set because side by side they tend to repel each other. So it's a little difficult to get these things to fall into place. I may just run it without it. I think there's enough surface area to generate the pulse that the coils need. Uh, cross our fingers on that. I, I would prefer that than have these pieces fly off and screw up the stator. Um, I got a lot of surface area there that that magnet's going to hold. It's not going to come flying off. These little pieces, I don't know. So I may just leave them out. Uh, that's it. We're going to let this cure for like 48 hours. I ran a Q-tip along the edges, tried to fill in the gaps where I could, uh, just to even reinforce the ones that did not come loose. Uh, it'd be a shame to put all this together. It works, and then one of the ones I didn't do comes loose. <laughs> so hopefully that epoxy will get into the cracks and grooves and adhere to the metal. Uh, I ordered some primer epoxy. It's a sealer. I can't remember the name of the place. I just got it off Amazon. Uh, I think there's a gentleman online that uses it as well when he refurbs these flywheels. Um, I'm going to spray the whole thing with the primer epoxy. I put sand, well, glass bead. No, not glass bead. It's just glass media inside a blasting cabinet got all the paint off all the rust off and i'm going to primer coat the whole thing probably two times two maybe three times on the outside and two times where the magnets are uh, so i don't want it uh i don't want to increase the surface any area anymore plus uh there'll probably be a reduction in the magnetism i would think so 
two two small coats just to seal it up and protect it from any uh, any of the outside elements. These things will rust, and of course, the rust eats away the the surface of the metal what, that the epoxy Evinrude uses to hold these magnets in place, and then they just break free. So hopefully, they're going to be nice and sealed up now, and give a couple more years, save a thousand dollars buying a new flywheel. So this is definitely doable. I've done it before on the older motors, you know, the 80s, the 90s, early 2000s, and no issues. Uh, I know motors that are running today that we just epoxy back the magnets that have come loose on Mercury, on Evinrude's, and should be no different. Although there's quite a few magnets on the E-Tech stator. It did run. Uh, it actually ran very well and would just start dropping voltage I guess once the magnet started shifting positions to a point where the pulse or the capacitor couldn't recharge itself fast enough to provide adequate power to the the ignition system and the fuel injectors and the engine would just cut off or it'd go into reduction mode and like I said Two of the, ooh, no more than that. Four of the magnets were attached to the coils, so they were basically doing nothing. And the other five were loose up against you know each other here on the sides. So obviously, it still ran. So this sh should be a vast improvement, regardless. Uh, we'll we'll find out. A couple of days, I'll have this thing all completed, painted, and back on the motor and get it out on the water and see how it does. Alrighty, get you an update when uh, when this is done and the paint comes in. Alright, so we got our first coat of epoxy primer. I'm using this Spray Max product. Usually I, I mix it and spray it with an air sprayer, but my air sprayer is messed up. So I figured I'd give the aerosol can a shot. Essentially, the catalyst is on the bottom. You push that in and you'll hear it filling into the can. Before you do that, you gotta shake this thing up for like two minutes according to uh, the instructions right there. And then you spray away. I noticed the clog, it gets clogged quite a bit, but then uh, if you put this in various positions it determines the spray pattern you get so I went with the whitest spray pattern and it stopped clogging up and uh, we'll let this set for about oh maybe a couple hours four hours or so and I'll spray another coat on it and then I'm gonna put uh, just some high temp paint on it got a little fuzzy fur fur right there but it's a flywheel, ain't gotta look pretty. Hey everyone, we're back at it with this flywheel. Got it mounted back on the engine. Since we're using the same flywheel, hopefully there's no need to adjust the timing. Let's do it to inspect. Once you got, while you've got the flywheel off, you may want to wire brush any corrosion you see. And then spray it down with some Corrosion X or some Amsoil HD Metal Protect works great. Leaves a nice thin film, anti-corrosive, and will help prevent any rust. And hopefully, that's two coats of epoxy and top coat of engine uh, paint will protect it. Should be better than what they did from factory. So, let me get this all together and crank her up, see if she spins. Okay, so we got the flywheel in, got the computer back on. Uh, I got the bracket for the capacitor somewhere. Right now I'm going to leave it dangling off. Because uh, I'm a little anxious to see if this thing cranks right up. Which is, if you know e they should just crank right up. Um, got to put my tie straps back on the exhaust sensor and the water passage uh, can't think of anything else that you should know 
Uh, I used the Milwaukee torque uh, battery operated. Crank it up and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to torque these down to spec. Uh, got the water hooked up. Let's see what we get. I predict it will start first turn of the key. Beautiful. Music to my ears. And let's check the voltage on the I command gauge. I'm not sure if you can see that. Right at 55 volts, 54, 55, looks good. I'm gonna bring up the RPMs a little bit. You really don't wanna run it on the flush port too long. And that looks good to me. It was dropping down to 30, sometimes 20 volts, so. I think our problem is fixed. It's back up to 55.